And in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and talk to you all about how to build stamina for long exams like the MCAT, step one, or step two CK. <laughs> The first thing you need to know is that these are not your ordinary exams. These are not like the exams that you've taken in college or undergrad. Um, these exams are much longer and they take out so much more energy from you. So learning how to prepare for these exams and actually preparing for the length of these exams is really important to actually doing well on these exams. All right, so just to give some reference, the MCAT is actually about six hours and 15 minutes long of pure actual content. And with breaks, it's seven hours and 30 minutes long. Step one clocks in at seven hours of pure content. That is seven blocks long of 40 questions and eight hours with the breaks included. Step two CK is another step past step one. That is eight hours long of pure content. So eight blocks and nine hours, including breaks. So the first thing that I want you to start doing to building up your stamina for taking these exams is you need to start practicing as if you're taking the real exam. And the first way you do that is by doing time blocks on your question banks. Okay, so the, the question is, when do you start doing time blocks? Um, so I would suggest that you start doing time blocks as soon as you feel like you've gotten a good understanding of the general content on the exam. Um, if you feel like you, you know the material really well, um, you're missing some questions here or there, I would say that's probably the best time to start doing time blocks. And I would say you definitely wanna do time blocks at least two weeks before you start taking, uh, before you actually take the exam. Because you want to train yourself to do these time blocks. There, it's different doing a time block than it is um, doing like blocks like in tutor mode um, on New World. Figuring out like when you wanna do the time blocks and go ahead and do those as soon as possible. Doing time blocks really helps you to get kind of get a feel of what it's going to be like on the actual test day. Because um, there's a thing when you do the time blocks, there's a lot more pressure on you um, to keep up a certain pace. And if you haven't practiced that, I guarantee you when it actually comes time to do your practice test or to do um, the real test on test day, you're going to find yourself struggling a lot more because you're just not prepared for that. So I definitely encourage you all, you want to do time blocks as soon as you feel comfortable that you can. Like I said, Make sure that you have a good understanding of the material in general. And then from there, it's really just about kind of perfecting the craft of going through a question quickly enough. And when you do it under timed um, blocks, you know, you have that added little bit of pressure on you that makes you want to just keep a certain pace. Start the time blocks as soon as you feel like you're ready for them, um, but definitely no later than uh, within two weeks of your exam. Definitely want to start it within the last two weeks of your study period for the exam. So the next piece of advice that I have for you is that you want to be able to build yourself up to doing four blocks um, in the question banks in a row without having to really stop. I want you to treat it like the real thing. So as soon as you finish a block, go ahead, take like a five minute break, maybe a 10 minute break, but no longer than that. And I want you to start the next block of your question bank. As soon as you can do four blocks in a row, uh, you know, with like five minute breaks in between, I'd say you're pretty well ready to take on the real exam. Uh, I mean, it's kind of important to know that when you're on the real exam, you're definitely going to have a little bit of an adrenaline rush that's going to help push you through the extra blocks. But I would say, you know, if you can get four blocks done, you're probably in pretty good shape for handling the stamina part of the exam. The best way to do that is to really build yourself up to four blocks. For me, it took a while to get to the point where I could do four blocks, you know, back to back to back and not feel miserably tired or lose my focus. I initially started with just doing one block a day. And then, you know, after like a week or so of doing one block a day, I would start doing two blocks a day. And if you can just keep on increasing um, the amount of blocks that you do per day, once you feel like you can handle two blocks, it's like, okay, that's not too bad, move up to three. And then once you go from three, go up to four. And like I said, once you get to that four number, I feel like you're probably pretty good for handling the stamina part. Um, so yeah, just kind of work your way up there and you're gonna be able to build up that stamina over time. All right, and another pro tip, um, when you're doing your blocks back to back to back, uh, I think it's really important that you go ahead and put your phone on airplane mode you don't want anything to distract you. You don't want something to kind of get in your mind between the blocks. Just put your phone on airplane mode. And also I put my phone on airplane mode and I put it on do not disturb. That way there's nothing that can come through that's gonna distract me. All right, so tip number three is you need to build up the mentality that you can do this, that you can handle an eight hour, seven hour, nine hour exam. You need to imagine it and you need to you know feel it within you. So 
what I mean by that is it's kind of the same way that like an athlete would imagine themselves, you know, um, for instance, if they're in basketball, like that they're hitting the shot or, you know, if they're in soccer, that they're hitting the goal, you know, you, it's mental imagery. And what I did before my exam was every day, I would just imagine myself taking a nine hour long exam and not being tired. I imagine myself going through each block and just crushing it. I imagine myself, you know, just not getting tired, not losing my focus and just really staying on what I have to do. And, you know, when I go to sleep, I'm like, okay, I can just see myself, you know, doing well in the exam, you know, and I can see myself not getting tired, not getting flustered and staying focused and using all the hard work and practice that I put in to my study period on the actual exam. So if you just every day, just kind of build it into your, your psyche. That's like, I got this. I am going to kill it on exam day, you know, and I'm going to do great. I'm not going to be tired. If you can just really build that into your mentality, uh, when you come into test day, you've already like imagined the situation happening so many times. It's just going to feel like another day in the office for you. So I would definitely say like every day, just try and, you know, imagine eight, nine blocks, you know, of question banks in a row and just imagine yourself, you know, doing it and, you know, doing it without losing your focus. Um, if you can do that, it's definitely going to help you um, just stay calm on test day and feel like you've done this before. And just the last thing I want to say is, you know, take a practice test. Uh, try to take a full length practice test like it's the real deal just to kind of get a feeling of what it's going to be like to do the real exam. Uh, you won't really know unless you actually try doing a practice test. Um, I would save doing these practice tests, like the like full length ones, until you're pretty close to the actual exam. You definitely want to do them after you've been already doing the time blocks and stuff like that, um, because you want to know like how you feel after already doing all this preparation. I mean, if you take the practice test before doing all these things, like building up to four blocks, doing time blocks and stuff, you're going to probably not do as good as you hoped. And then it doesn't really give you any information. So I would do this after you've already done all the things that we discussed in this video. Um, and if you do that, you'll know exactly how prepared you are to take the actual exam. And I would say you definitely want to try at least one, at least one full day of just study, you know, doing practice tests the entire day as if it's the real thing, because you don't want the first time that you do a practice test be on test day. You want to know what it feels like at least once before going into test day. So definitely give that a try and kind of gauge yourself on how ready you are for the actual test day with that practice test. All right, so that's really all the tips that I have uh, in this video. I hope that you guys found this helpful. I know step one, step two, and the MCAT, those are beasts of exams. I wish any of you all who are gonna take that the best of luck on taking those exams. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, you know, post in the comments down below or message me. I'll be more than happy to help you all. Um, if you guys haven't already, go ahead, hit the subscribe button. Uh, I'm trying to grow this channel so I can put out more great content for you all and help as many people as I can. I will catch you guys in the another video. Peace.